iPhone 15 lineup, both on the regular and the Pro side, are equipped with USB-C. Now on the iPhone 15 and the 15 Plus, it is equipped with a USB 2.0 USB-C port, and basically what that means is that you're not going to be getting very fast data transfer speeds and very fast charging speeds as well. Versus on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, it is equipped with a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, which allows up to 10 gigs per second of transfer speed. So that's going to open up the door to a lot of accessibility. So you're able to use different dongles, different docks, different hubs, different kind of accessories or auxiliary devices with that iPhone. So in this video, since USB-C is so new and we want to see exactly what it actually entails and how it can be used, I wanted to kind of connect a few products, show the basics of what it looks like to maybe connect a dongle, connect an external device, an SSD, things like that. And definitely leave a comment down below if there's a specific product or a specific use case or accessory that you want me to test out in the future in a future maybe part two video. But in this video, I want to show you guys exactly what we can do with an iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. I'm going to be using the iPhone 15 Pro and we're going to talk about exactly what I'm plugging in, see how it affects the iPhone, if it plays well with the iPhone, doesn't play well, if it warms up the iPhone because we do have the new heat gate going on right now. But let's get into this video. So we will be testing all these products on the fly and we're going to start pretty basic. Again, I'm using a 15 Pro Max, the titanium colorway, and this beautiful USB-C port is the secret to getting all this done. So being able to just plug in something like this monitor, which is a monitor that we're reviewing, this 27 inch new 4K Philips monitor, which is awesome. But literally, if you just plug this in, we should be able to get not only power to the actual iPhone, which you see right there, we should get a little dongle up here. So the dongle kind of animation to let you know that, hey, you're plugged in. And then you can see that now we are mirroring the screen. So again, you're just gonna be mirroring the iPhone. It's not gonna be anything crazy. There's no Samsung Dex UI or maybe even a stage manager or extended monitor support, but it works exactly how you'd want it to. So if you're mirroring your display, again, if I open up something like YouTube right here, open up this video, press play, it's gonna show the video in full screen, especially when I turn it to the side. So it shows the video in full screen, you're able to play whatever you want. And this works again, we're directly plugged in with USB-C cable directly into this monitor. So it is technically a single cable solution. And it works even better with something like Notes. So if I turn the Notes app over like this, you then get it in landscape mode, and then you're able to kind of roll with it and work with it that way. So, so it does work if you wanna use an external monitor and think about the possibilities that like you can go in here, maybe get a game going. So if I wanna type in, my new favorite game, which is Retro Bowl College. Now I can play this video game in landscape mode in kind of this full screen 27 inch TV and be able to actually load up and be able to play this game nicely. So to keep this kind of simple, the next thing I want to do is actually plug in my T7 Shield. So this is a 512 gig SSD that I use on occasion. And if you plug this in, you should be able to just quickly read it because it should be able to power on the actual hard drive, which you can see that little blue light is flashing. And then if I go and go into my files app, you can see that it shows up right there. So we have the T7 Shield, which has all the kind of factory setting stuff in there, which is great to see. But for instance, now if I wanna grab this and move it into my files, I can actually import it directly into the T7. So if I go here, go into browse, go into the T7 Shield, I can just press save, and then automatically it will be saving on there. So if I go back on here, you can see that it's there, and now I'm playing it directly from that SSD. So being able to do that is amazing. And in that same light, you can actually record ProRes footage directly onto an SSD. So let's say you got just a base model 256 gig iPhone because you don't wanna spend the, you know all that money on a terabyte of storage. So if you go into your iPhone camera settings, go into formats, then scroll down to where it says Apple ProRes, turn that on, and then if you go into your actual photos app or the actual camera app and you go into video, you can see that when I turn ProRes on, there's a little USB-C icon down there. So what that means is that I'm actually recording this directly onto the SSD. So it's kind of noticing that I have a lot of space. So I can record up to 290 minutes worth of ProRes footage because again, these files are gigantic, so it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to record it onto just your regular, you know, on-device SSD. So being able to now offload this onto a faster SSD and a bigger SSD is even better. Our buddy Steven Robles did mention that if you have a slower, maybe SD card reader or maybe something a little bit on that, or like a thumb drive or something like that, that isn't going to be a fast enough kind of transfer speed or hard drive to be able to actually take in that ProRes footage. So you're gonna get drop frames and it's gonna have issues. So get yourself something like a T7 or a T5, something that just has kind of a higher level efficiency in terms of being able to use that USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. So next up, let's try a USB-C keyboard. So this is the Satechi X1 Slim, probably my favorite keyboard of all time. We'll plug this in and see if we get any indicator or anything that it's actually there. So right now it doesn't show that it's kind of, there's no indication that it's actually plugged in, but I do have it turned on. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into my notes app, kind of hold it there and see if we can actually type. So if I get my cursor, 
press enter a few times. You can see that I am typing directly from the keyboard onto the actual iPhone. So I think this is really cool because I know some people like to use their iPhone with a Bluetooth keyboard, but being able to plug in directly is just another feature that this USB-C port is allowing for. So being able to do that is a nice little feature, something that I wanted to test out. And some people will ask, is, does it only work with the Notes app? No, it works with anything that has a cursor. So here I have a new iMessage open. So you can see that I'm typing it out. And when you unplug, it has the same kind of effect or UI that happens when you kind of take the iPad off the Magic Keyboard. So if I unplug this, the virtual keyboard will pop in. And then when I plug it back in, the keyboard just disappears right there. So a nice little feature that we now have with the USB-C port. So the next thing I quickly want to test is to see if we can actually connect a USB-C controller directly into the iPhone and see if it'll start working. We know that we can connect these controllers via Bluetooth, but let's see if a data USB-C cable can give us the same effect. So I'm plugging this in right now. You can see that it's plugged in. It did vibrate, but that could just mean that it's actually showing power. So it's actually powering it on in terms of being able to charge the battery. But if I go into here, It doesn't seem like it's actually doing anything. So just so you are aware, from what I've been testing, you cannot actually use a gaming controller directly plugged in. You can definitely use it when it's used by Bluetooth, but if you just plug it in like this, all it's gonna do is charge this, and I actually think it's still connected to my Xbox in the other room. So now the next thing I have here is a docking station or docking hub by a company called Dockcase. This is a 10 in one, and what I like about this is that it does give you a little bit of analytics or some actual statistics and some diagnostics of what is going on. So right now, I do have an HDMI cable that's plugged into that monitor from earlier. I have an SD card in the SD card reader and then a micro SD card down here to see if it actually picks anything up. So if I just plug this in, Let's see if the iPhone give it enough juice for it to actually work. So let's plug this in. You can see the dock case is powering on. And what I like about it is like I mentioned earlier, it does recognize that it's connecting to the monitor over here. And then also it's letting me know that there's two SD cards that are actually plugged in. So you can see that it is plugged in, it's connected to the monitor and those things are working fine. So what I'm gonna do is actually start to plug in more stuff and see if it works. So as you can see, the monitor is actually showing the iPhone itself. So it is mirroring the iPhone. And like I mentioned, what I have connected to it is an HDMI cable. I did add power to this because it's gonna need power to actually use the rest of the ports, but we also have the other SD card reader. So if I grab the iPhone and then go into the Files app, I should be able to see both of those. So you can see that both of them are right here. So we have both no name SD cards, which I think they're 32 gig SD cards, and they are showing up on the iPhone and on the mirror display. But then what happens if I try to plug this into the dock too? So as you can see, it seems to have reset itself and it is kind of turning back on. And you can see that diagnostically, it is showing that we're charging. We're actually getting the HDMI out, which is nice. And it will show that it has a third SSD in there. So you can see that it is kind of messing up a little bit, but that could be the dock itself and not the actual iPhone. But you can see that now we have the T7 Shield and both no names on there. And then if you plug in the keyboard, so I just plugged in the keyboard to the actual dock itself. So this thing has a bunch of stuff plugged into it and it's all being run on the iPhone. And if I start to type, you can see that it is typing. If I press escape, if I press delete, if I press skip, play and pause, those are all things that will be, be able to be used on the keyboard. So let's finish up this video. So as you saw, that USB-C port, especially on the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, really unlocks a lot of possibilities from an accessibility standpoint, right? You can use dongles and hubs and docking stations and different accessories and be able to physically wire in and not rely on things like Bluetooth and AirDrop, which is a great thing to see for a workflow perspective, especially if you're somebody that's using ProRes footage, somebody that uses your iPhone as your main camera, like myself. So now I'll be able to just record on the iPhone, then use a USB-C cable to transfer it over to my iPad and then I'll just be able to edit it instead of relying on things like AirDrop. But there were some things that I did notice that didn't actually work. So like we saw, being able to plug in a controller physically does not actually work. You have to still use Bluetooth in order for that to work and be able to game with that. But like I said, you can still just plug in HDMI, connect to a TV and then still be able to Bluetooth the controller and still use it as a game console, which I think is very cool. And then secondly, we had the same issue that we had with the iPad Pro and the USB-C port when it comes to audio. When you plug in the USB-C port into whatever you're doing, maybe this monitor behind me, if that monitor does not have an audio out, you will not be able to hear anything that's happening. You'll have to connect via Bluetooth. And there's no way to then bypass that and be able to use the speakers on the iPhone itself to actually show off that audio. So if you're plugged in via USB-C to any sort of kind of external monitor or a docking station or whatever the case may be, 
If there's no audio out on the other end, you will not be able to hear anything and you cannot use your iPhone speakers when plugged in. Something to take note of, which I hope Apple fixes both on the iPad and now on the iPhone. But overall, like I said, USB-C is gonna open up a lot of doors for a lot of accessories. It's gonna be the wild, wild west. I can see manufacturers creating maybe like a six in one or a 10 in one iPhone case that plugs in directly on it and you have HDMI ports and auxiliary ports and SD card readers directly on there. So sky's really the limit at this point, but that is gonna do it. Like I said, leave a comment down below of what other products I should test out. If there's something else that you wanna see tested out with this new iPhone and leave a little dolphin if you made it to the very end of this video. But that's gonna do it. If you wanna watch some more iOS, iPadOS or macOS, click on one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando and I'm out of here. Peace.